morning. It is Friday, March 20th, and we are continuing our trek through the whole Bible um, according to some key verses, trying to weave our way through the major theme that we see going through the whole thing. So let's uh, count our checkpoints so far. One, creation. Two, human beings. Three, the fall. Four, redemption promised. Five, Abraham, that's what we talked about yesterday, and today we're adding six, Judah the king. Now, um, reducing everything to 16 verses, you might be a little surprised that we talk about someone like Judah, who you don't even really probably think of very much or know very much about. Um, we see Abraham being important. We see Abraham having Isaac, right? And then Isaac having Jacob and Esau. Jacob being the one that God chooses to um, continue his line through. Jacob then has um, Mary's, remember he has to run away because Esau is wanting to kill him because Jacob was deceitful with his father. We don't see uh, people necessarily that are doing a really good job of being good, okay? So we see Jacob being a deceiver. He runs off. He has to run away to his uncle Laban's house because Esau is trying to kill him um, because he tricked him out of his uh, blessing, firstborn blessing. So then he goes to Laban and he works for seven years wanting to marry Rachel and Laban deceives him. And Laban gives him his other daughter, Leah. Well then... That's not who Jacob really wanted. So he says, I'll work another seven years. And he works another seven years and marries Rachel. So now he has two wives, which we see that's a problem too, because we have one being completely doted on and loved, which is Rachel, and the other one being ignored. And the Bible tells us specifically, and I love this about God, that God saw Leah's distress and that she wasn't loved and he blessed her with children. And Leah had lots of of children and found comfort in that and eventually you see in the names that she gives her children that she realizes that God loves her and has blessed her and um, but in the meantime Rachel is not having any children and Leah is having all these children and finally um, Rachel is blessed with a son and um, she names him Joseph and then she has another one named Benjamin um, Joseph is, of course, doted on by Jacob because he loved Rachel, and so he loves uh, Joseph. Well, what do you think the brothers think about that? They're not so keen on that, right? That's, that's, not, that's not fair. And so they're kind of mad at Joseph and always um, upset at the attention that he receives. And eventually they decide to get him back for it, right? You, you should know a little bit of the story. So instead of killing him though, and Judah is the one, a little bit of knowledge, okay? Judah's the one that says, no, let's don't kill him. Let's sell him and make some money. Okay, so right off the bat, we know that Judah is not on this list because he's the best one, right? Just because he didn't want to kill him doesn't make him good. He says, let's make some money off of him. Well, this is your brother. How would you feel if your brothers did that to you or your sister or your siblings? Said, hey, let's let's not kill him. Let's make some make some money. We've talked about slavery before. Slavery has been the same for mankind. It would have been the same thing for him. Would have been awful. He, So Joseph was sold into slavery, traded and traded and traded, wound up in Egypt, didn't know the language, didn't know the people. He was a slave boy. He was treated like a slave boy. But he trusted that God had a plan and he continued to trust in God. God raised him up in different uh, places where he was serving. But then he would experience another downfall, not not for his own, but for um, for other people. And so he he rises, 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 and then he falls and gets thrown in jail of a false accusation. And he stays there for years and years and years. But while in jail, he is trustworthy, he does well, and he rises and rises and rises in the estimation of all those in charge of the jail. And... Um, Finally, they remember that he has the ability to read dreams. And the Pharaoh is having dreams and can't understand them. So they call for this boy from the prison. And here comes Joseph again. And Joseph is raised up. 
And why is Joseph raised up? There's about to be a famine in the land. And God gives a vision to Pharaoh so that he can prepare and save. But guess what? It's ultimately to save God's own people. And it's through Joseph that he does it. And so during this famine, Joseph's brothers come to him, not knowing that it's him, but they come to Egypt knowing that there's food in Egypt. They come to Egypt and beg and not knowing that in selling their brother away, okay, they have now, they are now protected. God took that awful act and now Joseph is in the power and has saved all of saved the grain for seven years and now he is saving his own family that tried to destroy him. So through Joseph, God is able to rescue his line, the the promised line, and I think that is so cool. So then as so Judah is one of the brothers. As Jacob, the dad, is on his deathbed, he did something that um, God allowed him to do. He prophesied. He spoke a blessing over each one of his sons. And through doing that, God was actually speaking through him. And the blessing that he prophesied over Judah was, oh, I'm in the wrong chapter. Let me get to it real quick. It says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. A scepter is what a king holds, right? It's what a ruler has, and it says he will have a ruler's staff beneath his feet. This is not the oldest. This is not the most noble. This is just the one that God chose. This is Judah. and. Um, God says, through your line, through your line will I bring a king that will rule over everyone. And it says, um, to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. A descendant of Abraham, and more specifically as this text reveals to us, a descendant of Judah would not only bless the nations, but in doing so, he would also renew and even expand God's kingdom presence in the world. So you see, Adam and Eve were meant to be like a king and a queen. They were meant to rule over God's creation, but they rejected that. That's been our paragraph, right? They rejected that rule by sinning and being kicked out of the garden. And so God is saying, one of mine will rule. And I've chosen a people. I've chosen Abraham. Through Abraham, I'm going to work through Judah. And we're going to see another step along the way. And God is specifically going to draw his line so that when Jesus comes, we can trace it back and see God's perfect line. God didn't mess up one step of the way. Not one step did was he off in any way. Jesus' birth and Jesus' coming was completely prophesied. Why? Because it was God's plan. And that's what I want you to see. That's why I want to go through this with you because I want you to see that Jesus is the beginning of the story, the middle, and the end. It was all God's plan. He will be reigning in the end too when we're gone. It's our complete hope that everything, all of my life, everything completely rests in Jesus. And I can trust in that because God has made it true all the way through. Um, you may wonder sometimes why we, why we touch on some things and not on others. There's lots of important things as we walk through the Bible. None are more important than others. But what we're doing as we trace these specific points is we're seeing the base, basic covenant structure through the Bible and how God is working through his promises to his people. And Judah was a big promise because God had promised to Abraham. He, well, let's back up. He had promised to Adam and Eve. That, this, that the seed of the serpent would be destroyed. He had promised Abraham that he would make him a nation, and he's promising to Judah that one of his will sit on the throne, and one will forever and ever and ever. Okay, so, so far we have, here is our paragraph. Say it with me. God created a kingdom, and he is the king, but he made human beings to represent him in that kingdom. 
Adam and Eve rejected this call, which led to sin and death. But God promised to defeat the serpent through the seed of the woman, who is also the seed of Abraham. Through Abraham's family, and specifically Judah's royal seed, oops, seed, the covenant blessings would come to the world. God has a plan. He's working it out. We can see that as we look, as we look back through the Bible, and then that gives us confidence and hope as we move forward in our own lives. Let's pray. God, we love you. Our hearts desire to know you more, to reach out to you, to please you, to honor you, and we pray that you would work in our lives each day. Help us during this time that many of us may be stressing out in different ways, that we may be stuck at home, that we may be uh, doing things in ways that we don't we wouldn't necessarily choose. I pray that you would bring peace to each family, that you would be working your perfect plan in all of us um, each day, and that we would trust you and lean on you as we see you in the scripture and we see that you have a plan and you are working it out. Help us to trust you for that in our own lives. And I pray for specific needs that anyone may have, that you would be meeting those um, for healing, for comfort, for dependence on you. And we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. You will see me in some other videos.